Hey everybody, welcome to the Andika Bulletin for Friday 4th of November 2022. So the overnight market started with a bit of a hangover from Powell's uh, rug pull yesterday on interest rates. Bank of England hiked uh, their rates as expected from 2.25% uh, to 3% uh, and also warned of a longer recession. And there was uh, a services uh, survey in the US that showed the economic situation in the US is growing uglier at the same time as unit labour costs grew at the fastest paced, pace in 40 years. So the result was the stocks, mostly tech and bonds, uh, were lower in price. The US dollar surged, gold was weaker, and Bitcoin was fairly um, much unchanged. Uh, the Fed terminal rate expectations are slightly higher, now to around about 5.2%, and uh, as subsequent rate cut expectations uh, are now declining uh, after Powell's recent um, decision to raise US rates. Uh, on the day, well, on the overnights last night, the Dow and the small caps desperately tried to stay you know, unchanged. Uh, the S&P lost further ground and the NASDAQ was basically monkey hammered uh, down about 2%. Things traded sideways for much of the afternoon session until the last 15 to 20 minutes when everything went pear-shaped and basically puked. So the US markets in the end finished down 146 on the Dow, 40 points on the S&P and 180 points uh, on the NASDAQ. Uh, basically, the NASDAQ's now down about 6% from the highs um, right before Powell's speech. So that's roughly about oh, nearly a trillion dollars worth of market cap, you know, down and out. And let's also just uh, bring up a quick story about inflation and why inflation, you know, not you know, tackled can be a serious, serious problem. Take Turkey. Turkey's annual inflation has hit the highest level in 24 years, which is naturally worsening the cost of living crisis facing the country. Their 12-month CPI, which measures the inflation on the annual basis like we do, hit 85.5% in October. That's just nuts. So just think about that. You buy something for $10, and then at the end of the month, it's 85% higher. And, and that's just a, a classic example of why you gotta tackle inflation. If it gets out of control, like it is in Turkey, um, your purchasing power is absolutely destroyed with you know your currency because the cost of goods and services just goes through the roof. So, you know, um, they're in all sorts of problems uh, over there. Uh, remember, you know, and they're also a, a member of NATO as well. So what could possibly go wrong there? And just to finish up, because I do want to try and keep these usually uh, in, in a pretty short space, uh, the US two yields are at their highest uh, yield rate since about 2007. That's coming in at about 4.7%. Uh, and um, we can see here that the two year compared to the US two, 10 year shows how inverted that interest rate is. And that's the most inverted level since 19. Uh, 82. In other words, the two-year is higher than the 10-year yield. So that's um, uh, quite interesting there. That's unsustainable. Uh, said the US dollar surge. So Aussie dollar, as you can see, is um, under 63 cents. And um, uh, our market, by the way, is also set for a, a weaker open. We're down, probably going to be down about 24 points leading into the weekend. And... Uh, what else was there the last thing to just talk about? Oh, yeah, um, for, now that Powell has, you know, removed hope again, um, you know, stocks, including ours, have a long way to catch down to the reality of where the bond market is. And you can see that by this particular chart here, which in this case is illustrating the S&P 500 over the Fed terminal rate expectations. So there's a bit more to happen there. And just um, remember that the thing when you're trying to break uh, the economy is the first thing you do break is the market. So on that really happy note, have a great weekend. Happy Friday, and we'll see you next week. Take it easy.